which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Of course, like I said earlier on, we do have a supporting Bible test, and this is taken from the passage uh, from the Sermon on the Mount as delivered by the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have it, that's Matthew chapter 7. We're going to read from verse 21 to verse 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you will practice lawlessness. That's our supporting text from uh, the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 7, from verse 21 to verse 23. Now, as usual, for any Bible teaching we do on this program, especially when we have a topic that has a, a very relevant uh, introductory element, if you will, that is really rooted in the holy part of Christianity, talking about first century uh, Christians. We like to always give a background because that makes people to have uh, the right concept about the teaching that is being delivered to them. We want people to see exactly where we're coming from so that they know exactly what we are trying to drive at. So the background to this Talking about Jude from our main text, Jude, the brother of the Lord Jesus Christ. Between AD 65 and 80, Jude, the brother of our Lord Jesus Christ, came along, Apostle Peter, in one in the church against false teaching, false teachers, and apostasy in general. The early Christians suffered from satanic attack of what the Lord Jesus called wolves in sheep's clothing during his own early ministry. Although there's a great uh, semblance or what you can call a level of similarity between the uh, epistle of uh, Jude and the second epistle of uh, Apostle Peter, especially when you go to chapter 2. There's a very great similarity there in the way the case is laid against apostates and false teachers. But the team of, of for the believers to contend for the faith that was delivered to them was a resounding warning to holy believers who were saddled with the responsibility of proliferating the truth of the word of God, even to generations unborn. These warnings, they were very detailed in uh, Jude's writing. Who apostates and false teachers were, he was able to really <clears throat> bring out a good description for us to know the kind of people he's describing. Their stealthy style of infiltration into the body of Christ, their characteristics, and even what we should be watching out for when we are trying to identify who these uh, wolves in sheep clothing are. Now, let me go further by the way of definition of an apostate. Now, apostates could be defined from two different angles. Yeah, the, the two do not contradict but rather they complement uh, each other. The first one 
will be to define an apostate as a person who has fallen away from key and true doctrines of the Bible, the Word of God, and has fallen into heretical teachings that he or she now claims to be the real Christian doctrine. And the other one, of course, an apostate could be defined as a person who has done a complete renunciation of the Christian faith. That is meaning he or she has nothing more to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. He has said, or she has said, that's it. <laughs> I have nothing to do with him anymore. I mean, we've, in the United States, we've had cases recently of uh, worship leaders and even pastors coming out to say they are renouncing their faith. But we understand by the word of God, when they say they are renouncing their faith, that means they never had that faith before to start with. So we know it's the lie of the enemy to bring about what we refer to as negative evangelism. So the heart of some children of God, true children of God, that they, their hearts can be attacked one way or the other. Because when you see a worship leader, maybe the person has been doing that for years, or a pastor who has been doing that for years coming out and saying, you know what, I think the, the, the Jesus has been claiming to be serving for all these years, I think I'm not even convinced that it's real. So the enemy does that, he will let them stay longer so that when they come out, their negative testimony will be able to kind of deceive a lot of people. I have a news for you, and the truth, the, the news is, this set of people, according to the word of God, as we go forward, you will know, they never had any faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, starting out. I mean, there have already been people who have been hiding themselves, but they are not the real set of people we want to identify as children of God. They are wolves in sheep clothing. Amen? That's who they are. They are not sheep. Amen? Now, how do people become apostates? How, in most cases, if we are to look at it, because it's a question that comes up in anybody's mind, people may want to say, how, how, how do they get to this level? But there's one thing people always forget when you want to talk about how do this set of people get to this level. The understanding we need to have is the word of God. And the Lord Jesus Christ himself delivered a message that is so sound about how people turn to be apostates. I want to put this to you. It's very hard for somebody to come out as a false teacher if that person has not been exposed to the word of God. One way or the other, they've had exposure to the word of God. Some of them have studied the Bible the issue has always been the fact that they have never yielded their heart to the, to the Lord God Almighty himself. So we find out that these people, they appear to be Christians, but really, they are not Christians. First, we have to know, like I said, the evil hearts they have, the Bible calls that the evil heart of unbelief, that's what they have. They have packed with Satan. <laughs> And we now open their hearts to the redeeming word of God. That's the main problem they have. Uh, like somebody has well said, that the, <clears throat> the heart of the issue with them, people like this, is the issue of their hearts. And we have to look at it from that angle, even as we continue in Jesus' name. Now, the Lord Jesus, in, uh, in the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 13, talks about... Uh, the parable of the sower. Now I want to go quickly over the meaning, the interpretation he gave to the three or four, the first set of seeds, or the first set of areas where the seed fell. The Lord clarified this, the, the, the parable in a way that anybody who has done a good study of it will understand truly well why people will hear the word of God and then they don't do anything with it. The Bible says in that chapter 13, from verse 18 to 19, talks about somebody who hears the word of God, 
and does not understand it. And the Bible says the enemy comes immediately and takes it away. It's talking about the enemy taking the word away because the person has nothing to do with it. The problem is the heart of that person has not been open to receive the word of God. And because the enemy knows what to do with the word, the enemy steals it right away. Because the, the enemy has a plan of destruction of that, over that person's life. And I want to tell you, this still goes to describe the heart of that person in or herself. When the word of God is spoken and is not received, something has to do with the heart of the person. And the enemy doesn't waste time. When we say the enemy, we are talking about Satan. He comes straight away and pick that word so that it doesn't bear any fruit. And the Bible, I mean, the Lord also gave the description of the second type, but where, this, uh, where the seed fell. The seed that, fell, that fell on stony places. He said, this is the evil who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet has no root in self. He has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises, because of the word, talking about the word that he has received, immediately it stumbles. You see, that's another type to look at. When somebody doesn't have the right acts, they seem to have received the word of God. They run away with it, they guess what? Nothing really is happening. This set of people, some of them end up in churches. We're talking about denominations. And they begin to learn the word of God. In fact, they mingle with the sheep. I'm talking about the children of God. But unfortunately, they are actually wolves in sheep clothing. They are not the true people because they never received, they never received that word of God that will have mixed with faith in their hearts to be called children of God. So that means the Holy Spirit is not residing inside of them. They don't know the Lord. Now, the third type of soil where the seed fell, it's talking about now he will receive the seed. Among the thorns is he who hears the word. We have, we have done, we have dealt with the, the one of, of stony, then we are talking about the one receiving the seed on the thorns. Among the thorns is he who hears the word of God and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of the riches choke the world and it becomes unfruitful. Now, I don't need to really overemphasize that. You understand that actually it's talking about the heart of that person. The heart is somewhere else. And when the heart is somewhere else and cannot be called back home, that means the heart is more than likely has been arrested by Satan. Because the Bible talks of the Father. When somebody loves the cares of this world, that person is not of the Father. It belongs to that of, that of satanic setting or setup. That's what is happening. So when they say they have received the word of God, you know what happened? What happens to them is they kind of have a, a kind of a small screen, if you will, to present to people that indeed they are children of God. But they move away doing what they like. But that doesn't mean they will not attend church. They go to church, they attend Bible uh, 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 studies. Some of them end up becoming pastors by going to seminaries and things like that. That does not mean they are children of God. Folks, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's only the Lord that sees the heart. The truth of the matter is the Bible explains it. It's not everybody that says. The Lord will say it. You'll, you'll hear very soon how the Lord God Almighty, the Lord Jesus himself, addressed situations like that so that people can wake up and stop being deceived. Amen? Now, of course, when we're talking about false teacher, we understand that somebody, like I said earlier, home, who comes out and calls himself or herself a pastor or a preacher of the world, and who is now taking those things that we know to be true about the word of God, is twisting it, <laughs> getting into a different uh, uh, way of interpretation. You should know there's something behind that. It's not just ordinary. Something is happening. And it is spiritual. If you don't know it, they are agents assigned to do things like that because of their act that is evil amen now that is talking about actually how the lord jesus christ described their heart the heart of people receiving the word of god i'll move further to talk about now to go 
on today's, today's uh, uh, main Bible text that we are dealing with, talking about the apostates themselves. We want to see some in-depth description and explanation about who these people are, what they do, how we identify them, and of course, what awaits them. What awaits them, very important. But we are studying this more, uh, especially because they are capable of doing a lot of evil to children of God, and also to those people who are about seeking the way of salvation. So that's the more reason we will not just brush over it, because nowadays, it has become something very prevalent. People just have ministries everywhere. Everybody doing what they like. It's now very commonplace. And that's why we need to know who are the rich children of God? Who have been called? Who are these people? We need to know and be able to identify them. Amen. Now, the first thing we will notice from the passage I read for our main Bible text is this, that the apostates, their blemishes to what the body of Christ stands for in ministering to the lost world. For their aim is to distort the way of truth, feed their own bellies, and lure unsuspecting people to destruction. They do that a lot. The apostles have the appearance of God's ministers, but their work is dead. They are destined for destruction. For they willingly go against the light of the gospel they were formerly exposed to. And they have chosen the path of irredeemable lifestyle. Also, the apostates, they are workers of iniquities who actively expose their follies through unconciliable lies. If you are smart, you will know that. The lie they tell, if you, especially when I say if you are smart, if you know the word of God, you'll be able to put some things together than to know that some things are wrong with these people. And there are lewd passions that will ultimately result in their total ruin. From history, you can go and see, most of them, they rise up, but over time they get exposed. And if they don't change, because in most cases they don't change, their total ruin will be witnessed by people who have known them. Now, the revelation we have from the word of God about this is this. That this ungodly work deliberately rejected God. And they work actively, though insidiously, in the body of Christ should be disarmed. We need the Spirit of God, the sweet Holy Spirit all the time, to be able to disarm these people. To expose them. And we reject them from among the believers to, pre to prevent their cancerous evil working. This evil work, the death work, dead work, the way about doing is so pervasive, even nowadays in the body of Christ. So we are never to take them with the levity and think <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. Let me be honest with you. Satan is, is serious at attacking the body of Christ more than you can imagine. And that's why he has sent also his own ministers. As we, as we go along, you will see there's some truth from the word of God that will define these people and will see exactly who they are. The apostles are spiritual rogues. They are liars. They are cheats. They are gluttons. They are perverts. And much more. Who have perfected the mastery of deception for living and have chosen the way of destruction for their own souls and they should be completely stood against. We should not give them any chance whatsoever among the body of Christ. Their apostates and their dead works are destined for eternal damnation for sure. For they have made themselves abhorrent to God Almighty. That we have to know. So they have no place in the midst of children of God. God Almighty, who judges righteously, will bring his judgment upon all workers of lawlessness. For sure. We are these apostates, we are the four. I'm talking about the first teachers now. 
and the ungodly who preach doctrines of demons. That's exactly what they do. That is what they do. Now, I said the other time, by the Spirit of, of God, the sweet Holy Spirit, we have to learn how to identify these people because of the evil they do. We can't just say, oh, don't, don't, don't worry, just leave them alone. They are very, very hard to design, so let's just get along. When I say they are very hard to design, the point of the matter is they really hard. I'm talking about the real, the true first teacher, they are very hard to design. In fact, the Lord Jesus Christ has something to say as we go, go along. We'll read it and we'll understand this, this thing is spiritual. It's nothing that we take with levity. They are very dangerous and at the same time, you can't just easily recognize who they are. Amen. Because in most cases, 95% of the cases, they follow the true path. But in less than 5% about 5% of the time, they begin to chip in, they begin to bring in their false teachings. And it only takes somebody who is very designing by the Spirit of God that can say, mm, something is wrong here. And please, please, I don't want you to misconstrue or misunderstand a lazy or a sloppy uh, Bible teacher or preacher or pastor or an evangelist. Don't, don't kind of uh, misunderstand them with somebody who is an apostate. Those are two different kinds of people. They're not the same. If a Bible teacher, if a pastor or an evangelist has not done their, their sermon very well as they are preaching the word of God, let me be honest with you, the Lord knows how to deal with them. And usually, they themselves, they don't follow the path of Satan. They come back later to realize what they are doing is evil. And they change by taking time to study the word of God. So that whatever they say will be the true word of God. But we are talking about those people that are like heads of Satan. So when they set out, they are actually setting out to go and deceive the children of God. So they are not in any way mistaken in their uh in their plan to deceive and to destroy so the apostate is an enemy of enemy of god that works for satan to pervert the way of the lord that's what they do he is a sinister minister of satan saddled with demonic responsibilities of distortion confusion and even trivializing what the word of God holds sacred. That's what they do. They are lived in their approaches to most of the things they do. So if you open your eyes very well, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, you begin to see who they are. Nowadays, we have some of them having big churches. And they have nothing to do with God Almighty himself. They are liars. Now, the Lord Jesus gave a parable which brings everything to light. He's talking about how we are supposed to know the source of apostasy and apostates, who they really are. I've kind of touched on it the other time, but I want to really read that portion of the Bible so that we know the background of what we are talking about. This is not just a man's description of it. This is the Lord's description of those people that we are to run away from. I'll read from Matthew chapter 13 again, and I will read from verse 24 to 30. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among wheat and went on his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tears also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then do, does it have tears? The tears refer to weeds. He said to them, An enemy has done this. Can you see? An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us to then go and gather them up? But he said, No. Lest while you gather up the tears, you also uproot the weeds with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And the time of harvest, how we say to the reapers, first gather together the trees and bind them in bundles to burn. 
to burn them, but gather the weight into my barn. You see, this clearly describes what will happen at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ himself makes it clear here that this is the work of Satan. An enemy has done this. Satan knows that when people receive the word of God, the true word of God, the life of people changes. The life changes. The, he knows. So how does he counterfeit? Is by bringing about his own agents to go and misrepresent or mispresent the word of God. And that is where you see apostates or false teachers coming in. Now, I read from uh, Matthew chapter 13, 37 to 39 again. The Lord Jesus Christ, he answered and said to them, He who saw the good seed, the Son of Man, that is talking about the word of God that is actually from God Almighty himself, that is being sown by true teachers. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the tears are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. So it's not somebody trying, this is from the Lord's mouth. The, the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The abyss is the hand of the age. And the reapers are the angels. I mean, we don't, know, we don't need further explanation. So we need to know this is a spiritual battle when we're talking about apostates or false teachers. They are not people we have to look at and just look at them and say, oh, yeah, it doesn't mean much. It means a lot. They are destroyers. And this is to let us know. Apostles are the first teachers. They will always be with us. <laughs> until the Lord returns and, judge, and, and, and to judge them. That said, we all know that we have responsibility to avoid the deception they bring about and also the evil they spread about. We need to work actively so that they don't hinder us. They can do a lot of evil. That will damage people's lives. In fact, for a lot of people who are going about, who have not made decisions, their own decisions rather, about coming to the Lord Jesus Christ, most of them fall into the trap of apostates we are talking about. And they never hear the true gospel. And their heart is never open because they are being deceived. That's very sad. Very, very sad. Uh, we have put together some ways by which we can identify these people. This is taken from the book of Jude, but I've been paraphrasing the different way so that we can understand what the Bible is saying. We first of all have to study ourselves approved. You know what? Because for us to figure out a real fake, I call it a real fake. If you want to figure out who an apostate is, I tell you the truth, you must have studied the word of God, the original, in depth. You need to take time to study the word of God, and then it will be easier for you. Where somebody is misrepresenting the word of God. Amen. The apostates, they are generally, they generally preach people-centric message or messages. They use love, mercy, and grace of God in a twisted or unbalanced fashion. You see, they go into the word of God, they use all those things, and then when they begin to explain them, if you have done your, your assignment very well with the reading of the Bible, the study of the Word of God, you will know that they are misrepresenting the Word of God. That's what they do. And that's why a lot of people who are Christians, who don't read their Bible or study their Bible, they fall in love with apostles because they, they come up with all these sweet things and they twist the Word of God and they make them happy. That is being people-centric. So that they center everything upon them so that they feel they are just too important. In fact, some of them think they are the Lord God Almighty and they put themselves in wrong position. That is what the apostate, an apostate will do in the life of a believer who does not study the word of God. Amen. They usually follow the line of other renowned preachers of truth, but with their own tweak to fill the narrative of their evil mindset of deception. We have seen this a lot of times. Also, 
they usually lead a double life of piety in the public and private life that lacks any spiritual candor. You will need to get to know who are the relatives or immediate family members are. If they tell you how they conduct themselves within their family setup, <laughs> you'll be surprised what you see, that these are not children of God. It's just most of the times, these are secrets that we never get to know. And it's really unfortunate that people fall for them. Amen. Now, I'm quickly going to go into the Word of God and bring out some Bible passages that refer to the deception and the doom of all these false teachers. We need to see what the Bible has to say about them. These are the things that we need to study very well, even as we identify them, so that we don't take it light or lightly to let them encroach the body of Christ and uh, begin to do their evil works. The Bible says, in 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. And this is telling us that false teachers, they are like little antichrist or shadows of antichrist. They are evil. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the antichrist is coming, even now many antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. You see, I've explained this, an apostate happens to be a wolf in sheep clothing. They are camouflaged as children of God, but they are not. Amen. The second one, Bible passage we're going to be reading, describes apostates or false teachers, they themselves is described as being in demonic bondage, having yielded themselves to the lives of Satan. Of course, they must have obeyed themselves before they became servants of Satan. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they are lured through the loss of flesh, through lewdness, the ones that have actually escaped from those who live in error. This is 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. So sad. First teachers are wolves in sheep clothing. We said it. We read this from uh, Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 and 16. That was the Lord Jesus Christ himself saying it. Each hears a pure works of flesh, seeking fleshly appeal and not the truth. We'll be reading this from the second Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. The Bible says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have, they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. Now we're talking about four teachers. Because when you have itching ears, the only kind of teachers you can find for yourself, they will be false teachers. The true teachers, they don't, they don't appeal to people with itchy ears. And they will turn their ears away from the truth. And be turned aside to fables. Apostles make themselves irredeemable. This is taken from Second Peter, also chapter two, from verse twenty to twenty-two. For if after they have escaped, escaped the pollutions of this world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter hand is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. For it has happened to them according to the true proverb. A dog returns to his own vomit and a soul having washed 
to our wallowing in the mud. So that will tell you that in most of the cases that you read in the Word of God, that tells you that you see talking about people as if people are lo losing their faith. And they will not let you know that they can lose their salvation. In most cases that you read, is talking about the situation of the people who have been exposed to the Word of God. They were formerly not exposed, but they have been exposed to the Word of God. They had the Word of God, but the Word of God has not brought up any fruit in their lives. But the danger in them that we need to watch for is the, is the fact that they don't write it on their forehead that they are wolves in sheep clothing. They are not true children of God. You won't know unless the Holy Spirit lets you know or you have that discerning spirit, especially through the studying of the Word of God so that you can decipher what the truth is. Amen. Now I'm going to read a popular Bible passage from the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verses 4 to 6. Because people like to kind of twist this Bible passage. That's why I've included this Bible passage in this uh, sermon. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tested the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tested the good work of God and the powers of the age to come. If they fall away, to relieve them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves, the Son of God, and put him to an open shame. Now, this was addressed to people who were formerly unbelievers. It was not addressed to Christians. So that will let you know, we're not talking about Christians losing their faith. It was people, we started people that were preached to, and who we were supposed to run with the truth of the word of God. But guess what? They found another way. And they said, well, <laughs> we believed it then, but now we don't think it's even true. So what happened to them? Let's go back to that parable give, given by the Lord Jesus Christ. The parable of the sower. The seed has fallen either by the wayside, or on a stony place, or the seed has fallen among the tongues. The seed never germinated to a fruitful level in their hearts. So they did not have the Spirit of God in them. So they went back, and according to Second Peter that we just read, it says, A dog returns to his own vomit, and a soul, having washed, the south having watched to a wallowing in the mouth. So that is what you get when people have not yielded their heart to the Lord God Almighty. I said the other time that apostles are Satan's sinister ministers. We read this from the Second Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 13 to 15. See what Apostle Paul has to say. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. See, that describes exactly what we've been trying to see and what we've been trying to, 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 to describe about these people. They are satanic ministers or they are satan's ministers doing what satan has called them to do. And the Bible describes what their hand will be. Amen. Apostates, they deny God through their hearts. In most of the things they do, if you watch closely, you will know they are not true to the word of God. See, the Bible says in Titus chapter 1, from verse 15 to 16, to the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their mind and conscience are defiled. They profess to know God, 
but in works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. I will tell you, if you are very designed by the Spirit of God, you see the conduct of most false teachers. Their conduct alone should tell you something is wrong with them. But unfortunately, because <laughs> the Bible says, the children of God who are supposed to know the right thing, they kind of, they, they become timid, if you will, in exercising the authority they have been given. And the children of this world, they become wiser in their own world and in their own age. Even much better compared to the children of the kingdom. If you have been in the business world, you will know. A businessman will always fish out somebody who is about to con in. They don't take anything like that lightly. They do their assignments. They will tell you, I don't trust that man or I don't trust that woman. Because they know what they are doing. So why is it that for children of God in the kingdom, we cannot see when something is not right. If it is not right, that means it is not right. Check it with your Bible. Then you will know exactly what the Bible has to say. Amen? Now, we are going to talk about the things that the Bible text, that is the main Bible text, now brings, up, brings to light for children of God that we need to know. I've, I've put this in about five to six. Yeah, we have it about five to six statements that we'll be reading out here. Because for children of God, we need to know how we are to address situations like this. And where we are to stand, very important. Number one, we have to be designing and be ready always to reject the lives of all these false teachers. We have to know the truth of the word of God in order to be able to discern them. I've said that before. We have to run from anything capable of making us produce dead works that cannot stand before God for we have been called to do good works through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have to understand at the same time that the judgment of God is coming swiftly on all those who are calling him a liar for God is true to his word. As children of God, we have to know God and obey him at all times. When you obey the word of God at all times, it is very difficult for an apostate, the false teacher, as a Christian, to deceive you and tell you lie. Amen? We have to understand that working of miracles prophesied in the name of Jesus is not a true test to know a child of God. The key is simple obedience to the word of God. We have to know that the Lord Jesus will be the Lord of our life and should be the Lord of our life and nothing else has been preached by the apostates. Most of the apostates, they will preach material things to you. They will talk about how you have to prosper. In fact, they went to the word of God and begin to twist it. So they don't focus on your prosperity based on the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is your Redeemer. Don't be deceived by the things they are saying. Amen. Declaring the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior without corresponding obedience, we've got to know this, to his words, is nothing but a rush. How do you cause somebody, a child of God, and <clears throat> one way or the other, consistently people have seen the lifestyle that person is living is not according to the word of God. And this person comes on the pulpit and preaches to you all the time. And you go away and you, you tell your friends you, you, you attend the church. And you even tell your, your friends that you have a pastor. That means you yourself, you don't want to obey the word of God. So you are happy listening to lies. For a child of God, we have to reject this. This is a lie from the pit of hell. Living a life of disobedience to the word of God and claiming to be using his power for prophecies, healing, deliverances. ETC, this is never to be misunderstood with knowing God that results from obedience to his word. We have to be very careful. Don't allow these evildoers come into your tent and begin to peddle their evil works and begin to deceive you. The Bible declares that the end of false prophet, the, the, the word of God declares that the end time false prophets. See, we, are, we need to run away from all these things that we're looking for, signs and wonders. Signs and wonders will be performed a lot, especially those who will remain here when the church has been taken up in rapture. 
please understand the word of God. The first prophet, the end time first prophet will perform lots of miracles that you have never seen before to authenticate the person of Antichrist. And this will be a great deception for a lot of people. So, the Lord has not given us anything like looking for miracle signs as a way of finding out who the true preachers are. No, that's not the word of God. I'll read from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22 to 24. See what the Bible has to say. For Jews request a sign, and Greeks seek, a, seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. To the Jews, a stumbling block. And to the Greeks, foolishness. But to those who are called, talking about two children of God, both Jews and Gentiles, that is, from all angles, when you put children of God together, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Everything has to center on, on, the, on the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with somebody trying to show you demonstration of what he can do or what he knows. No, that's not what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us on that cross. Amen. Now, in closing, I want to talk to those people <laughs> who have not, even until now, given their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of them have seen signs that things are changing, even in the world around them. But because their hearts, their hearts are so hardened and they, want, they don't want to yield, I want to appeal to you that you need to change your way because Jesus is coming back to judge the world. As you are, chances are that as a, as a non-believer that you will end up hearing false gospel if your heart is still stuck in here and there. And I can tell you that will lead you into a bondage. And I'm saying not only a bondage here and not, that will lead you to eternal hell. Because more than likely the true gospel has been preached around you, but you rejected it. This is the issue of your heart. Today you have listened to me. I've read to you from the word of God and I've described according to the word of God what false teaching means and what it can do. Now it's time for you to make a choice. The Lord God Almighty hasn't given up on you. He's been sending the student out every day to minister so that you can change your mind. The Bible says in Romans chapter 9, I mean 10 rather, verses 9 to 13, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, that you will be saved. For with your heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with mouth, confession is made, I mean, unto salvation. You confess unto salvation with your mouth. And for the scripture says, whoever believes on him would not be put to shame, that is, believing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord, over all, is rich towards all who will believe in him. Hmm. That is saying, nobody is left out. Amen? The same God will be rich towards you. It doesn't matter your background. Whoever call upon him is rich towards everyone. And the Bible says, for whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you not tired of the life, the life you've been living, that has no destination? Will you give your life to him now? A link is coming. On our, on our, as, we, as, as I'm speaking, as I'm rounding up, it will lead you to a, a page on our website. I want to encourage you. If you are thinking of taking the right step, even at this time, Follow that link and you will see what we have especially prepared for you. And we trust the Lord God Almighty to do that which He alone can do. Because 
which is the work of the Holy Spirit, to convict us of our sins and actually get somebody saved. But what you need to know is you have to be willing yourself. And we pray you will not miss your appointment with your Creator this day. Amen. Shall we pray even as we close? Father Lord, we thank you. We bless you, Lord, for indeed you have done it all for us, especially in giving us the word of life, the Bible, to be our roadmap in all that we do so that the enemy will not encroach into our camp and begin to deceive us. Father, we pray that as your children, we will study ourselves approved, we will do what we have to do so that your word will richly dwell in our hearts to obey you and to do according to your plan and purpose for our lives. And when necessary, to be able to fish out those liars that the enemy has sent out into the world to distort the word of God. Lord, we also pray for those who will be going to that page on our website, want to know Jesus. We pray, Lord, that even as they open their hearts, they will begin to write a new chapter in the history of their life this very day. To see that indeed it is good to have a relationship with you. Thank you, our Lord and our Savior. For we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. And until next time, when we shall come again on this program, remain blessed. Jesus died for us all so we can have life. Come to him and receive life, believe on him and thirst no more. Good News Reporting is all we do, seeing souls saved is our ministry.